Hey, what's up? I'm Dustin, a developer here at Treehouse. I want to go over a JavaScript array method known as for each. It can seem a little confusing and hard to use at first, but this is a really great way to iterate over a collection of items in an array. The only prerequisite that I would have for this would be to just understand how loops work in JavaScript, since this method does loop over array items. I'll go over the differences between a standard for loop and the for each method. And this will all be done in the console of my browser, so feel free to follow along with me. If you stick around until the end, I'll show you a fun real world example using this method to create a small settings application dynamically. As always, check the teacher's notes or description of this video for related content and a blog post covering this method. If you're ready, let's get into it. Let's first get started by checking out the MDN docs for for each. According to MDN, the for each method executes a provided function once for each array element. Let's take a look at the example that they've provided. On line one, a variable named array one is created and it holds an array of strings. On line three, they write the array name followed by the for each method. Inside the method, you see the word element, but what exactly is element and where did it come from? Well, it's actually a variable. Each time the array gets looped over, this element variable holds the value of the current index. So to put it simply, element is just a placeholder variable holding the current index's value. You don't have to name this element. You can actually name this anything you'd like. You can see that next they are logging the value of element to the console. So each time the loop runs on the array, the value is stored into this element variable and logged to the console. And then it's repeated until every item in the array has been looped over. So in their example, when the code runs, for each loops through the array, the first time through element holds the value of the first index, which is the string of A. This gets logged to the console and then the process starts over again, but at the next index. And this keeps happening until all array items have been looped over. In case you are unfamiliar with the shorthand syntax that the MDN docs use, here's the same code with the standard syntax. Now that we have a bit of an understanding of the basics with for each, let's look at the parameters we can use with this method. If you scroll down to the parameters section, the first thing listed is the callback function. This is where you can write a function for what you want to do each time for each loops over your array. In this example we just went over, this was the console.log that was ran on each iteration with the for each method. Next, you'll see that element variable again, and this is the variable you assign the current index's value through each iteration. The only other parameter we'll go over is index. This can be called anything you'd like, just like the element parameter, but this is usually just named index. But what does it do? According to MDN, this is the index of the element in the array. Let's check this out in the browser console to get a better understanding for what this parameter can do. In my project folder, all I have is an index.html file that links to an app.js file. We will write our code in this app.js file, so let's open this up in the browser console side by side with my editor so that we can see everything at once. The first thing I'll do is I'll just log hello world to the console to make sure everything's working properly. I'll hit save and sweet, hello world shows up in the console. So let's remove that and let's set up an array. We can name this nums and set up this array with just a few numbers. I'll do one, two, three, and four. Underneath that, let's run the for each method on our array. We can write nums.foreach and the element parameter will call num. Since each item in our array is a number, this variable name makes sense. Inside the function, we'll just log num. I'll hit save and we'll see one, two, three, and four in the browser console, which are the items of our array. But what about that index parameter that we discussed earlier? 
Let's add that in and then change our console.log to log out this index variable. Let's hit save and we'll notice that now we see 0, 1, 2, and 3. This is because our for each method is logging the index variable each time through the array. So the first element of our array is the number 1, and the number 1 has an array index of 0, since arrays start with a 0 index. So let's break down what we've done so far. We first initialized a variable and named it nums. This variable holds an array of numbers. Next, we ran the for each method on this variable that holds our array. We gave our for each method two parameters, num and index. We then console.log num and index. The first time the for each method goes through our array, num equals 1. One's index in our array is 0, so index equals 0. The second time through the array, num holds the value of 2 with an index value of 1. The third time, the num variable holds the value of 3 and the index holds the value of 2. And the last time through our array, num holds the value of 4, while the index holds the value of 3. One way that I like to remember how this method works is by making sure my array's name is a plural word since it's an array that holds a collection of items. So when we run our for each, our element variable can be named the singular version of our plural array name. Then you can just verbally say something like users dot for each user do this or colors dot for each color do this. I know what you're thinking. This is pretty cool, but how or why would I need to use this in a practical way? Well, if you've not had much experience building out complex websites and applications, you might have not needed to loop over something like data before. Check out this settings application that I made. While this is pretty simple and only has four settings in the menu, you can see how tedious this would be to build out if there were hundreds of settings in the UI. So what I did was I created an array to hold all of the data for these settings and then loop over them to display them in the UI. I also have this notification section for letting the user know that their setting has been applied. I was able to do this pretty easily by using the index parameter with for each. So let's jump into the code and see exactly how this was done. The first thing you'll notice in my app.js file is an array called settings. As mentioned earlier, this array holds all the data I need for my settings. Let's go over each item in the array really quickly. Each toggle switch in the UI is actually a checkbox. So we'll need it to have a unique ID that it shares with the label so that the user can click on either the toggle switch or the text content. The label holds a couple of paragraph tags that hold our title and description. Next, you'll see checked. This is set to either true or false. And that is so that when the page loads, the setting is either toggled on or off by default, respectively. Lastly, you'll see notification. And this is an object that holds two properties, on and off. This is the notification text based on the state of the toggle switch. Now that we understand what each item in our array holds, let's look at the rest of the code before diving into how we use for each to display it on the page. On line 48, you'll see a function. This function just creates an individual setting in the UI. I won't go over how this is done since this is outside of the scope of this video, but if you have a basic understanding of JavaScript, this is pretty straightforward. Feel free to pause the video and take a look, but basically we are just creating a function that takes in a unique ID, title, description, and check state as parameters to build a single setting in the page. This function won't actually do anything until we call it, so what we'll want to do is loop over each setting in our settings array and run this function. Next, on line 72, you'll notice another function. This one is titled create notification. And it does exactly that. This function will create a notification with whatever text content you pass in as a parameter. So we'll need to make sure to get the correct settings notification text when we call this function. We'll go over how to do this in just a little bit. On line 89, you'll see a loop. This is a standard for loop. I mentioned earlier, I'll show you the difference between a for loop and using the for each method. While they both can accomplish the same task, there are some slight differences. 
For one, syntax. I find the for each method is easier to read, understand, and write. If you look at the for loop, you'll see we are setting the variable named i to zero. And while i is less than the length of our settings array, we want to increase the value of i by one. So each time the loop runs, i is incremented by one until it's no longer less than the length of our settings array. Each time through the loop, we are calling our create setting function using the settings array. The index of the settings array comes from the value of i each time through the loop. So the first time through the loop, i equals zero. So we call our create setting function using the first index of our settings array. And we grab the unique ID, title, description, and check state. The function then builds out our UI and appends it to the page. I is then incremented by one, bringing its value to two, and now the loop runs again, but with the second index of our settings array. And this process keeps going until I is no longer less than the settings array's length. As you can see, this works perfectly and builds out all of our settings from the data in our settings array. Now let's comment out the for loop code and rewrite this using our for each method on the settings array. We can start by writing settings, which is our array name, followed by for each. We can set our element parameter to setting. Next, through each iteration of our settings array, we want to run the create setting function using the current settings unique ID, text, description, and checked state. Remember, this element parameter that we set to setting holds the current value of our array. So the first time through the loop, we are actually at the first index of our settings array, and so on and so on. So basically, what we're writing is settings dot for each setting create setting using the respective data. So let's hit save, and the browser now shows all of our settings again. In my opinion, this for each syntax is much easier to work with than your standard for loop, though both loops work perfectly fine for this scenario. Now let's check out how we can use the index parameter in our for each method to display the correct notification when our user toggles a setting on or off. Let's create a variable to hold all of our toggle switches. Remember, these are just checkbox inputs with some CSS styling to make them look like toggle switches. If you'd like to learn how to make them, check the teacher's notes or description for a video where I go over how to do that with just CSS pretty easily. We'll set this variable to document.querySelectorAll and we'll target all inputs that are children of the setting class. Because we used QuerySelectorAll, our variable holds a collection of items. So we are able to run the for each method on this. So let's do that. We'll write setting toggles dot for each and set the element parameter to toggle. And we'll add in the index parameter as well. What I'll do first is add an event listener to each one of these inputs. Because it's a checkbox input, we have access to the change event listener. So let's write toggle dot add event listener change. I'll write a simple if statement to test if our current toggle switch input is checked or not. And if it is, we want to call our create notification function with the on notification message. Else, do the same thing, but use the off notification message. So for now, let's just call our functions and I'll explain how we can get access to the right message for our message parameter. This next part might seem a little tricky to understand. But because we are looping over DOM elements instead of our settings array, you're probably wondering how we will have access to the current settings array element that we need for the notification message. Well, because our DOM elements were created from our settings array, we have the same amount of DOM elements that we are looping over as we do array elements in our settings array. So we can just use the current index value through our for each method on the DOM elements to access the correct settings array element and grab the respective notification message. So for the first part of our condition, we'll call our function and for the message parameter, we'll write settings at the current index dot notification dot on. And for the else portion, we'll just write settings at the current index dot notification dot off.
So let's quickly go over what we just wrote. We have a variable named setting toggles that holds all of our toggle switches. We are running the for each method on this variable since this variable holds a collection of elements. Through each iteration, the variable toggle holds the current element while index holds that element's index. We write an if statement to check if that toggle is checked or not, and if it is, we call our create notification function using the settings array at the current index. Because each element in our settings array has a notification object, we have to specify which property we are looking for. In this first condition of our if statement, we are looking for the notification.on property. In the else portion of our if statement, we are looking for the notification.off property. Let's now check the browser to see if this all worked. Sweet, when I toggle the setting, the correct setting message appears. I hope this guide was helpful. Using the for each method can really come in handy when needing to loop over the data in your arrays or even just working with a collection of DOM elements. I only covered the JavaScript portion of the settings menu, but if you'd like to see how I built out the UI, be sure to let me know. Also remember, I'll link a video down below and the teacher's notes or description on how you can set up your checkbox inputs to look like toggle switches. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, have fun and happy coding.